welcome to a long, long overdue full length shooting review with me, Rich Wall Cooper. Um, I'm really sorry that it's been such a long time since I bothered to make a full length review relating to air guns and shooting. However, there's a couple of reasons for that. One is because I haven't had anything new that I've had long enough to want to tell you about. And secondly, I have been making videos about other things which has kind of sidetracked me a little bit. So without further ado, today I want to talk about the Schofield um, six inch cowboy pistol, I guess you'd call it, Western style pistol. Um, and this is the pellet version in 4.5 millimeter CO2. So I hope you enjoy this video. Please remember to give me a like and subscribe if you're not subscribed to the channel. I put all my air gun and shooting videos in the same playlist so they're easy to find. So if you're not interested in dogs and you're not interested in flight sim, then you can quickly navigate your way to the uh, shooting reviews. So without further ado, uh, let's get on with it. So I've had this Schofield revolver for some time now because I've decided I don't want to do any more shooting reviews unless I've owned the pistol for a significant amount of time. I've had this for I think at least at least six months. Let me get it out of the box. Oh, a few targets in here. I'll do a shooting section of this review so we can go over that later. So we have the manual, uh, which I'll take some stills off and attach to the end of the video. I don't really need that. Um, and the revolver itself, which has got a lovely weight and heft to it straight out of the box. And I have got one or two other bits and pieces in the box. I have a tin of pellets and I have the shells. So here's the revolver. And I did buy additional shells for this, it comes with six. So pretty much that's what you would get in the box. And I'm using, or I have been using for the tests, the Excite Ecom 2. Um, flat heads these work quite well let's put those to one side and of course the standard 12 gram co2 so on first impressions this is a really nice looking revolver I have also got and you may have seen my review of the Colt single action army revolver which is in a sort of a polished a stainless or chrome finish and while it's a really nice gun, I actually think this trumps it for just the overall sort of quality of finish. It looks really authentic. Um, the grips on this wild plastic are actually a much better um, sort of feel than on the single action army pistol, which I know is made by a different manufacturer. So the only thing on this pistol that I'm not sure I do like is the safety, which I guess we need to have that for people that are not familiar with firearms. It is a full disconnect, so we can't move the trigger. We, you know, we can't cock it or anything else like that. We can still open the breech. So for the sake of the uh, 
this I'll be taking off the safety just by putting it to the rear um, and I, I'm going to warn you in advance that I do have some CO2 in this revolver so it will make a bang when I pull the trigger Um, so unlike the single action army Colt, this doesn't have a loading gate in the side. It's much more like the Webley, where you break the action in half and then an ejector rod will push out and eject your spent shells. Loading, once you've sort of pulled the action all the way down, it snaps back ready to load more shells. I've as you can see here, you may be able to see I've loaded some pellets in, but I won't be pulling the trigger while the um, while the gun's got gas in. So let me just ease the trigger off, put the safety catch back on, loading the shells. And I guess you could probably use a speed loader to do this. And I do have a couple of speed loaders, which I purchased for my revolver, Dan Wesson. Okay, so that's with the shell loaded and then to reject the cells you would just tip them over like so and throw them out like so. CO2 cartridge is housed in the grip which comes loose with ease and there is a tool for undoing the uh, screw in the bottom of the grip which is attached to the grip. You can obviously use an allen key, allen wrench if you uh, want to. Okay, so just once again, I'm ensuring that there are no shells in the revolver and I'm just doing a visual inspection there to make sure that there are no uh, pellets or other objects actually in the barrel. And when I pull the trigger on this, you will hear the report of the CO2 going off. So it's quite a nice trigger on this um, and I have been able to get good accuracy with it. Um, this is the pellet version so it probably is a little bit more accurate than the BB version however um, and I think if you've watched my other videos on the um, Umarex uh, cowboy rifle and the Umarex revolver you will see they are actually designed to fire BBs although they work far, far better with pellets. I feel like air gun manufacturers like Umarex, ASG and so on are really upping their game when it comes to creating really authentic, fun to shoot air guns uh, powered by CO2. Um, I'm going to be reviewing some excellent semi-automatic pistols, including the Springfield uh, XDM uh, in both the short and long barrel versions. If you like revolvers, this is really one that you need to get. I promise you, you won't be disappointed and I never want to recommend anything to you that I don't think is anything but the really best quality. So if you want to hit me up in the comments section or you have any questions, please, please let me know what your feelings and thoughts are on this particular air gun. And if you've got any recommendations for me, um, just let me know and I'll try and fit them into my not very busy review schedule.
So my aim point was about here. And like you could see, I wasn't particularly taking super great care with my shots. But that's pretty decent, I think. Let's step out to a further distance and see how we get on. So my first shots are from this distance, which is about six yards or so. And this was my distance attempt. That's about double the distance. things I haven't mentioned. One is obviously it's a single action trigger. The grip is always going to be a little bit more awkward than grips on some auto pistols like the 1911 Springfield or Glock but after a while you do get used to it. It is quite heavy at the front so um, I find it a little bit hard to keep it steady uh, if I'm shooting freehand or one-handed but I think as you can see it's reasonably good accuracy. CO2 consumption on the revolvers is absolutely superb compared to the semi-autos. That'll be because they don't really have to do anything like cycle the action or do blowback, anything, that kind of thing. Uh, so I am not swapping out the CO2 cartridges very often on this. I think I've probably had, oh, I don't know, three times the number of shots I would normally expect to get from a uh, CO2 blowback pistol um, definitely um, that was not a new cartridge that was in today while we were shooting so uh, it's had at least let me count probably at least like 40 45 shots plus what we put through today and the sights are extremely easy to acquire on this unlike um, the single action army which has got awful sights this has actually got a very good and visible front sight because there's a little bit of wear on it, catches the light. And the rear sight, while not adjustable, gives you a good view and allows you to focus on the target. Thanks again for watching. Please, if you haven't already, drop me a sub. Have managed to just break the 4,000 subscribers uh, target recently, so it'd be great to have a few more and push it up to 5,000. Thanks again for watching, all the best, and as always, have fun, but shoot safe. Just a quick hello from Uther the dog. He's had a small operation to remove a seed from his flank and he's wearing the cone of shame. Uh, for those of you that follow Uther and Bevan on uh, this YouTube channel, there will be more videos of them coming up soon.